Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at how to fetch the cryptocurrency data. So the first thing that we want to do is create a crypto model. This model will allow us to store the data that's coming back from the API into manageable objects. So each instance of a cryptocurrency here will be stored in an object. If we look at the definition of the class, you'll see that the fields or attributes are one-to-one -one with the data that's coming back. We are going to leave some fields out, so things like maximum supply, volume, USD, 24 hours, we're not going to use, but most of the data is available for us. And this is what the definition will look like. So let's look at how to create it. So under lib, let's create a new folder. And let's call it models. And then under models, I'll create a new file, and then I'll say crypto.dart. Then I'll say class crypto. And let's add the different fields. So I'll say final string ID, and then I'll just paste the other fields. As you can see, some of the data have a string data type, others have a double data type, and then the rank is an integer. Now let's create a constructor for this. So I'm gonna hover over any of them, say quick fix, and then create constructor for final fields. Now right now, these are uh, positional arguments, so it means that we have to maintain the order, but in order to change this into named arguments, I'll wrap them in curly braces. And then I'll select this, I'll do command D to highlight all of them, and then I'll go back and then say required. And then I'm going to add a comma at the end for indentation. This required keyword means that you cannot create a crypto object without an ID, without a name, without a symbol, and so on. Now in order to be able to easily create crypto objects from JSON data, we can use a helper method. And for that, we can use a factory constructor. So let's look at what a factory constructor looks like. So this is how you create a factory constructor in Dart. So you have the factory keyword, and then the name of the class, and then the action you're performing. So crypto.fromjson, so we're getting a JSON object, and then we are returning uh, a cryptocurrency object with the data parsed in from JSON. And as you can see here, we're getting the data from JSON. So we're saying JSON um, at the ID field, name field, symbol, explorer, so on. And then in the change percent 24 hours, we need to parse it into a double. And then for the rank, we need to parse it into an in integer. So let's look at how to do that. So here I'll say factory. I'll say crypto dot from JSON. Then I'll say map string to type dynamic. And then JSON. And I'm going to return a new instance of crypto. And then for each field, I'll say JSON at ID, for example. Next for the name will be, I'll highlight this and then say name, say symbol. And this will be change percent 24 hours. Now, but what we also want to do here is parse this into a double. So we're going to say double dot parse. And then I'll copy that twice. This one will be price USD. So say price USD. And this one will be market cap USD. Market cap USD. And then lastly, we're going to create a rank. And then it will say integer dot parse rather than double dot parse. And now we have a factory constructor. So what we'll be able to do from code is say crypto dot from JSON and then pass in a JSON object and this will return a, a new instance of crypto. So we can say final crypto and then something like this. But this will do it from home screen when we're actually fetching the data. So let's look at doing that. 